All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our session today. I'm really excited to be talking with Kevin Cho. My name is Ian Lee. I'm the managing director of a blockchain focused venture capital fund backed by IDEO called IDEO Collab Ventures. We've been building and investing in the blockchain and crypto space for the last five years. And we're really excited about how blockchain and decentralization is going to positively impact society and people all over the world. One of those spaces that we're really, really excited about is called the creator economy. And so today I'm, I'm really excited to talk to Kevin Cho of Kabam, Forte and Gen G about how blockchain is going to create an entirely new path for creators in this space to build their own virtual economies and assets and simultaneously in the process drive mass adoption of blockchain technology. So I'm going to introduce Kevin and then we're going to get right into it. So Kevin is the CEO and co-founder of Rally. It's a blockchain project for creators and their communities. He's the chairman and founder of GenG, a global esports team that in just two years has become the sixth largest esports team in the world, according to Forbes' annual ranking. Previously, before Rally, Kevin was the CEO and co founder of Kabam, the top developer of mobile games. He's been honored by Fortune in 40 Under 40, CNN in Smartest People in Tech, and Business Insider's Silicon Valley Top 100. Kevin Cho graduated from uh, Mag magna cum laude from University of California, Berkeley, and has served on the university's board of trustees for the last six years. Thanks, Kevin, for joining, and let's get right into the Q&A here. So um, before getting into blockchain, uh, you came from a gaming background, and what I'm really interested to hear about is what what made you interested in blockchain technology and how has that background inspired you in this new project that you're working on? So I made games for 11 years at Kabam and making games is about creating an experience, a context. But then what we're really doing at the end of the day is then within that context, how do we make players care about virtual goods, virtual currencies, virtual items um, within that context? And it's all about the social context it's all about, uh, you know, sometimes it's about the story, but more so these days, it's about creating a, an environment where a bunch of different people interact around these different, you know, virtual goods and virtual items. And so, um, so, so that's one part of the background. The second part is that uh, starting in about 2013 or so, some of the smartest people that I knew in the gaming industry were starting to go and, do, and, and, and focus on mining this crazy thing called BTC. Uh, and so I started to think, wow, some of the smartest people I know are really excited about what's happening uh, in the blockchain technology space and, uh, and then getting excited about Ethereum. And, uh, and so, you know, in 2017, after I sold Kabam, I said, I'm going to really sit down and I'm going to read Satoshi's white paper. I'm going to read everything I can about, you know, the space. And I just said to myself, wow, this is, this is going to change the world. And this is what I have to do next. So those two things kind of came together and um, and Rally was born out of that. Nice. So let's focus in a little bit more on this space that you're tackling with Rally, uh, which is the creator economy. So some people may not be familiar with what the creator economy is or who a creator is. So can you kind of define that for us and, and tell us more about this space that you're focused on? Absolutely. The creators are you know, people who are creating content. It started with YouTube as probably one of the first major platforms. Uh, so these are people who are creating content and it's either their primary income or their secondary income. And they're creating content on platforms today that are far more expansive than just YouTube. So it's things like Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, of course, right now. Um, you know, if, you have, if you have kids, you probably know what some of these new platforms are. Uh, but there's really kind of this global um, uh, global craze right now of new forms of influencers creating content about almost any topic you can imagine um, in these different uh, um, social media platforms. And it's, it's become an incredibly vibrant you know, world uh, today. I think there's there's two big ones. The first is that there's, it kind of boils down to two issues, right? There's bad economics. So a lot of these platforms uh, actually don't share any revenue with the creator. So platforms like Twitter or Snapchat, um, TikTok, uh, some of these newer platforms, partly because they're so young in their kind of cycle, 
um, you know, they really don't share any of the, the there's really no revenue opportunity for, uh, for the creators. A lot of times they're targeting young creators who are just happy to get a big following and become internet famous. And so these platforms uh, have no rev share opportunity or are just starting to implement some new revenue share opportunities with the creators. And then even platforms like YouTube and Twitch that have started with some pretty decent monetization opportunities for creators, as the platforms have grown and grown, those, those monetization opportunities have shifted and we've seen a lot of different demonetization campaigns that have either purposefully or accidentally hit a number of the creators in the space. And so um, your know, economics and if your livelihood is primarily based on creating content for some of these platforms, it's a very unstable environment, which leads to my second big issue, which is that I think there's, there's really a lack of control and there's no say that a creator has really in the platform policies in the algorithms that are being used to surface content or get new content in front of existing subscribers. Um, and so, you know, and, and, and the worst of it is um, two different aspects of either being demonetized or having certain videos demonetized. For example, if you created a COVID-19 video and you were, you know, you had a, a medical background and you were really trying to educate an audience, you know, those types of videos were demonetized by YouTube. Some good reasons for that, but a lot of other challenging reasons for that. And then the other, even worse, is to be deplatformed. And so if you, uh, in certain contexts, Maybe you're um, living in, in a country that doesn't respect free speech and your government complains about some of the content you're putting up online, you could just get kicked off of the platform without any real recourse you know, for, uh, for it. So I think there's, uh, those are the two big issues that I think are facing creators, uh, both in the United States, but all across the world. For those of you who are tuned in, um, if any of you guys have questions, feel free to drop uh, those questions into the Q and A section, and Kevin and I will be responding to them, you know, throughout this this session. So, Kevin, you're 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 really kind of um, you know talking about some of these these problems that exist for a large number of people. Actually, I mean, like YouTube, Instagram, I mean, they've got a billion, two billion, um, you know, uh, people that are using their platform on a on a monthly basis. I think YouTube alone has something like fifty million creators, and Instagram has. Uh, almost half a million influencers, right? And one of the things, um, the problems that you've identified that um, we we also have um, found in our research is that, you know, Web two, these Web two platforms like YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and whatnot, they're 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 really well optimized for things like distribution, attention, eyeballs, uh, particularly advertising based business models where these centralized marketplaces take you know a lot of the fees and and um, a lot of the value gets captured by these, these centralized organizations. And what Web3 or blockchains and crypto, uh, you know, we believe is really well optimized for is actually the opposite. So things like quality engagement, um, you know, uh, uh, community over kind of attention and also ownership and equity over kind of advertisement and fees. So I, I guess what are, what are your thoughts on that and how do you think that Web3 and your you know, projects like Rally are gonna help content creators break out of this cycle that they're currently living in. Yeah, this is a, a, a great topic and, and something that um, I'm very, very passionate about. I think, the, the, as you said, the Web2 era of business models was very much about how do I build a very large platform, how, give away the service for free, but collect a bunch of the data and, um, and as I get more and more data, I get more and more power, more and more um, uh, power to surface, you know, better content. And again, use that to give away, you know, the core product and get more distribution and get more data. And then roll that all up as I go public to, you know, create um, a nice business model where I take 100% of the revenue or a large part of the revenue. And I think that that was kind of the, the business model um, of the Web2 era. And I think uh, that's led us to kind of where we are today with a lot of big tech companies that have a near monopoly on uh, you know, their, their particular platform or very specific niche service. And, uh, you know, and it's, it's not a surprise. And that's, I, I think a lot of great valuable services have been created, but we're also seeing the drawbacks of that today with the lack of privacy, lack of control of your own data, um, lack of control over the economics because it's primarily advertising based. 
And uh, that's exactly why I'm so excited about where Web3 is heading. And I think a lot of the new uh, blockchain projects and Web3 projects are all about how do we create something that will eventually be decentralized. I think the space started with everything that needs to be decentralized from the beginning. Um, and I think Bitcoin did a great job of, of pioneering that. Uh, but we're also seeing now that there's a path established by projects like Compound and Maker uh, and a lot of other DeFi projects that's, hey, you know what, we're going to, this is so uh, complex and we're dealing with value. So how do we start with something that is a bit more centralized and then progressively decentralized over time? And then the business model sort of encourages that and is aligned with that. And so what happens is unlike, you know, sort of Web2 and big tech, where it was about giving things away for free and then consolidating power, closing the ecosystem, raising the fees, uh, changing the rules um, as, I, as the platforms get more and more power, I think Web3 is kind of going in the, the reverse direction, which is we're going to give away a bunch of stuff for free. But then as we could potentially consolidate that power, the space is all about how do we give away the ownership uh, to the community? How do we give away the governance to the community? How do we make sure that the technology is open and a shared protocol so that other developers can build on top of it without you know, fear that their APIs will be turned off all of a sudden um, and, uh, and they can't, you know, the service that they were trying to build a business on can't exist anymore because the, it's at odds with the business model of the, the central platform. So I think these are all of the principles that we think you know, very deeply about for Rally. And what's really exciting for me is that I think as we think about creators and we think about social media platforms, I think it's just a really ripe area for uh, Web3 to come in and take some of this ethos of, of what's happening and apply it to help you know, creators and fans uh, and people trying to make a living off of creating fantastic content uh, all throughout the world and really <clears throat> uh, turn this space on its head. I, I'm going to um, want to poke into kind of uh, the token design and, and the decentralization of the platform in a second. But can you talk about um, how Rally is going to be working with creators? Right. The we think about it giving each creator their own sort of blockchain toolkit. Uh, and it's, it, it, it'll start off as simple as no code and easy templates you know, for creators to use, but really, really powerful stuff under the hood. So uh, it starts with a kind of a unique branded cryptocurrency token for the creator. So maybe it's an EN coin, you know, for example. Um, <clears throat> we give them, again, under a hood, it's all... We use uh, something that we're very, we've been fascinated about since Bancor, which is uh, token bonding curves and pricing algorithms to help creators. And maybe you only have a hundred fans around the world. So even in a very small marketplace, we can create liquidity around this new you know, coin that basically powers a creator's own economy. Second, we create a very powerful set of NFTs that a creator can uh, easily configure in itself through their community. Uh, and that, that NFT creator can create collectibles, such as a digital autograph, you know, for example, that's rare and scarce. Or it could be a functional uh, NFT that unlocks content. You know, so, for example, if you hold on to this NFT for the next 30 days, um, you know, you get access to exclusive content that only my NFT holders who hold that, um, uh, that type of NFT can get access to. So it's a really powerful toolkit that we enable and it's all very easy and there's no code required to, to use it. And then the third part of it is <clears throat> uh, a loyalty system. And so this loyalty system, we're really fascinated with how do we take, um, we call it constant collateral loyalty system. So a creator would take a certain number of creator of their own creator's coins and lock them up into a kind of a new engagement token. And that's new engagement token can be earned by consuming content, you know, by watching, uh, by retweeting and sharing and posting uh, this creator's content. So it basically enables a, a creator to turn fans into real supporters and then also economically benefit as a creator grows their own you know, business. And it's a really powerful ecosystem here. I think we, we put all these things together. And I, I think I failed to mention that the NFTs themselves will be comprised of the tokens as well. And so the, um, you know, the creator's coins really are at the heart of everything that they do. Uh, there's also a very powerful um, clearinghouse architecture that we've designed that allows a creator to say, hey, every time my digital autograph trades, I get 20% of it. Um, and so it's a very uh, interesting way for a creator to either make 
income, you know, based on you know selling some of these new goods and services, as well as a new asset uh, for the creator. So the creator has their own Genesis tokens, and then um, you know as the tokens become more and more valuable, they're sitting on a pool of tokens, and so they're aligned with the rest of their fans and economy as as that economy grows over time. That's super cool. It sounds um, you know like an evolution of a lot of what the crypto community has been experimenting with over the past, you know, probably half year or plus or more, you know, pro projects like Roll, um, projects like Foundation and Zora really around uh, sort of helping different creators like issue either their own personal tokens or creator coins or other things like that. That's super interesting. I'd, I'd love to hear, um, so you walk through, um, you know, a, a lot about kind of the architecture of this system how is it that you think that this this token economy or token economic model can help solve you know a couple of those those two big problems? One on the creator side with developing stronger kind of communities engagement with their fans and followers, and on kind of the big tech side like um, align incentives better between the platforms and the creators themselves. The right, so the I think we what we think about when we. Um, Think about the economics is number one we make sure that there's never a fee you know for a creator right they're not uh, they're not subject to a platform saying hey come onto our platform and there's no fees and then but anytime i want to as a platform i could change the terms of service so now granted as we first launch you know we are launching it a little bit more centrally so it's fair for uh you know, the community to scratch their head and be like hey is this really going to be you know uh when can i see all the um you know the, the code for this, but we intend for this as we launch it and we get it to be uh, stable and mature that we turn over the smart contracts that govern really the rule set for how all this stuff works over to the community itself. And we're of course looking at a lot of what, what Compound and Maker are, are doing right now um, in terms of walking that path. So one is that we, we say, hey, here's creator, you have your own token, right? This is your own brand. We as a platform, we don't take any fees. We don't set the rules for what you can or cannot do. Uh, with this, your gov, your you know, you have that. On the other side, we do design into the network a really important set of restrictions on the creators themselves. And so the creators you know, sign up for kind of this transparent set of you know rules that say, hey, when I create an NFT, here's what the you know benefits are, and I can't just you know. Uh, so while the creator can change you know the can deliver these benefits to the to the fans, there's a level of transparency and that the creators can't change some of those rules kind of willy nilly without the community uh, also being in agreement. And then this all rolls up into a broader network as creators, um, as more and more creators come on where the governance of the network itself about who can come on as a creator, you know, the different uh, rule sets that all the creators are abided by. These are all your know, governance systems that uh, all the creators uh, will be able to vote on, you know, over time. And uh, we're really excited to build this out with the community itself. And so it's, it's all about giving the creators 100% of the economics of their own sort of mini economy that sits within uh, the ecosystem. And then number two, as in terms of the overall platform and how uh, the entire rally network will work, each creator has you know, a vote based on the size of their economy. Um, and uh, and that's, you know, that's how the whole system will run. In the rally itself, you know, our destiny is not to be a company, but it's to fade away into into nothing. So there won't be a company that sits there and says, "Hey, I'm trying to go public. I'm trying to make my next quarter's numbers. I'm trying to increase my profitability this much so that you know the investors don't dump my stock." You know, it's, this this isn't about that, right? This is about how do we create <clears throat> tokens that uh, when they're not worth anything, how do we give them out to the community, to the creators, to the fans? How do we grow this network together? and the rally dissolves itself, um, and then we all hold tokens. So people on the rally team, of course, hold you know tokens ourselves, and everyone's just incented over time to say, hey, we want to see more usage, more demand you know, for this type of asset, uh, and more usage of this network, and that, that's beneficial to everyone without saying, we got to you know, raise the fees again, we got to change the rules so that creators make less money next quarter. Uh, it's all about, nope, we're going to give it all away and dissolve into nothing, and really, then the creators don't have to worry that there's a, you know, huge new tech behemoth that is trying to, you know, yet again change the rules and, and be a kind of the next, you know, monopoly in the in the ecosystem. That's super cool. I mean, I, I've been really inspired in tracking you and your your team and your project over the last, you know, couple of years. You know, this this whole wave and movement around progressive decentralization with 
compound balancer and maker and all these other teams kind of leading the way, particularly from a token perspective. You guys have also been doing that in addition to progressively decentralizing the organization itself. I mean, uh, maybe people don't know this, but you guys started as uh, sort of a, a collection of different organizations and have progressively started to decentralize your organization over time, which has been super, super cool to watch. Um, I, I guess can just to that, barely like, hear you. Ahead here for it's rally a small in the project. Like, what are some of the could, upcoming um, dates, uh, maybe milestones I need to turn that people should be the um, uh, aware of and, and thinking about related to the development of, of this platform? So in the mid-July timeframe, we'll be launching our testnet. And this will be sort of a semi-closed you know, testnet where we're inviting um, a couple dozen creators uh, to come onto our platform and really work with us as we sort of iron out all the kinks, uh, but it will be uh, a live blockchain and uh, we're pretty excited about um, getting that live in the July timeframe. Um, and then in the following weeks over that, we'll be launching the rest of the toolkit with the NFTs, as well as um, you know the different uh, loyalty and engagement token uh, systems that we'll be testing with, with these uh, creators. And in the beginning, we're gonna be working with a lot of Twitch creators, which are uh, more used to you know dealing with you know game like you know services they're obviously playing games you know and streaming that uh, but they're also uh, you know Twitch also has a, a bunch of different you know type of uh, virtual currencies already that are built into the platform or provided by a third party and so we think it's a really robust ecosystem for us to you know roll out and also because we've um, uh, in a previous life I uh, started an esports team so we have you know, a number of streamers and esport players that we've been working with. Uh, and educating them on how this will work. And so we're pretty excited to get this into the hands of the community um, in the coming uh, months. Nice. How about developers? Like, um, oh, I'm on mute. How, how about developers? Like, how should um, developers think about getting involved and in, in how soon? So I think there's, there's there'll be several phases for how developers will get involved. The first is that we'll, we'll make you know, data and APIs open uh, sort of after this testnet phase uh, comes to an end um, and uh, allow developers to build some, you know, pretty simple, you know, things. Uh, but then, of course, you know, the ultimate destiny of this is to have, uh, you know, a bunch of the rally building blocks themselves be composable by other developers and other crypto projects um, to, you know, use them in, you know, maybe a DeFi, you know, project like, you know, Compound or maybe use it um, in uh, the way that, you know, creators are, are using you know, other things to create works of art or, or so forth. So we, we very much believe in the principle of composability, but that's also really hard because you need the network to be, that's when you really need to worry much more about the security and stability of the network. And so we're going to take it step by step by step and, uh, and really um, have kind of a multi-year, you know, we, we kind of think long-term as we build, um, how do we progressively take a step every single quarter towards you know, making the community stronger and giving away more and more of the project to the community. You touched on composability, um, which is a key, obviously, feature and in innovation of, of crypto and, and the blockchain space. Um, as it relates to composability of your platform, like um, what are some other projects that you're seeing that could have some kind of crossover um, with you in the future, either in the creator space or rally specifically? I think we think a lot about DeFi specifically. So, you know, for example, if a creator started to build a very vibrant economy on their um, on their own customized uh, uh, um, you know, token, how did how did they then? As it, it, it becomes an interesting way to build kind of a financial history, right? You can see uh, the history of the creator's economy. Uh, can the creator at that point, you know, for example, take a loan out and? Um, work with other DeFi projects or more centralized uh, blockchain projects around uh, collateralizing, taking their own economy and using it as collateral for some of these new projects that are coming out of DeFi. So we're pretty excited about that, whether it's, you know, BlockFi doing it more centrally or uh, your Compound and some others doing it more in a, in a very decentralized way. We're pretty excited about seeing some of that composability over time. So I think there'll be a lot of, uh, specifically as we build value around a creator's you know, brand, their token, scarce um, digital assets. You know, these are all things that I think will cross over into the DeFi space in a, in a pretty interesting way. That's super cool. I mean, you know, we've been obviously tracking, and I'm sure you have been as well, like the 
exponential growth of DeFi over the last uh, you know couple of years, particularly in the last month with Compound and Balancer and all these teams going live with their governance tokens. And it, it's been our it's been our sense that uh, DeFi is is going to be massive, but in order for it to cross over to the mainstream, it's going to need things that are outside of DeFi or, or at least DeFi adjacent. And so that's super exciting with what you're talking about. I'm, I'm curious to hear, so you, you said like uh, creators could collateralize their token and you know take out a loan or something on on Maker or some other uh, platform. What are what are some of those um, like? Can you bring some of those those ideas to life in terms of like what that would mean for creators and in the creator economy? Yeah, a lot of creators. So kind of back zooming all the way out again. A lot of creators. Um, you know, if you're um, if, if a lot of creators would love to do would love to pursue their passion full time, right? And a lot of them start out as kind of a side gig. Uh, side hustle for them in, in, in addition to whatever their, their main job is. And so there, uh, for a lot of creators that are just getting started, uh, a lot of it is I'm spending a couple hours a day creating content. After I create the content, I've got to edit it myself. I've got to market it myself. Um, and so it's just, it's a lot of work that you put in in the beginning. And of course, as you're just getting started, you don't have much of a, you know, audience yet. And so you're, you're trying to build your brand and you're doing a lot of that and you're making, making, you may be making a couple dollars a day. That's literally how a lot of these creators get started, but it's a it's a work of it's a passion project, you know, for them. But as they start getting going, maybe they're starting to make um, a few hundred dollars a week, and so it's nice supplemental income for them. But a lot of creators start getting to that point where you know a lot of their kind of personal hustle and passion get them to a certain plateau, and it's hard for them to sort of make it all the way over to the edge where they sort of make enough money to quit their job full time and then safely sort of just focus on their passion. So a lot of the creators get to this point where they're trying to make a decision. Do I you know, stop my full-time job so I can 100% focus on this and get myself to that next plateau? Or do I you know, try to work incredibly hard trying to do my full-time job as well as uh, you know, create content? And I think a lot of what DeFi and what a lot of finance, uh, you know, some of these, these financial projects are, are uh, enabling is to sort of borrow a little bit from the future, right? If I'm if I'm a creator and I've been doing this for a couple of years and I'm starting to grow my economy and it's growing, I'm making you know a few dollars a day to a few you know hundreds of dollars a week. Um, how do I potentially take a loan against you know? And I've got a few you know super fans. Let's say I've got a handful of super fans that love my work. How do I potentially uh, take that history that's now transparent to the world um, and use some of these other projects uh, that are being pioneered in the crypto space to basically make my history transparent, get a loan so I can invest and quit my job and have you know, uh, enough money to feed myself and pay rent for the next several months and really take a you know, risk to, to you know, make this my full career. And I, th I think those types of tipping points are gonna be really interesting as the crypto space grows and we're able to tokenize more of these economies and create more transparency and create kind of the equivalent of you know, a financial credit history, but all on chain in a way that um, you know, other communities sitting in and around, you know, what we're doing in the creator space, you know, may be interested to say, hey, I want to take a bet on that creator and help them. Um, and I'm going to come in early on this creator and help them um, make, make this a full time um, job for this creator. Yeah. I mean, not only just like paying rent and, and uh, buying food uh, and things like that, but but as you're saying, like really getting their fans and community to invest in them and invest in the growth of their business that they're creating around themselves. Um, especially in these times, right? I mean, we, we were living in this weird world where, um, you know, more and more people are, are sitting at home and um, a lot of them are turning to these platforms, whether it's like Substack or Patreon or other things to, you know, basically uh, invest in their passion and maybe even, you know, form these side hustles. I think, you know, there's something like 17 million creators in the U.S. and it's growing double digits every single year. So this is a this is a big, big trend, and it's it's only going to get bigger as part of this new economy. You know, comes out of this this crisis that we're living in. So um, sure, sure. how how do people how do people stand? I'll give I'll give you another I'll give you another story about this, Ian. So the you know, we had a uh, we had an esports player on Gen G that came from Indonesia, and this person had hundreds of thousands of fans that followed this player because they thought he was just super, super talented. But because he was in Indonesia, 
his monetization from ads was almost nothing. And so he, you know, he had all this, this huge following. He just wasn't able to make any money, you know, by doing it. And partly he had a very global fan base. And so he had a lot of fans from Malaysia, from Vietnam, from Singapore, from the United States even. But because he lived in Indonesia, he was dealing with you know, all the different currency exchanges. And so he just wasn't able to really make the same amount of you know, money on Twitch that a similar US you know, player would be making from some of these you know, ancillary you know, revenue streams. And so you know, I think um, I'm really excited about obviously creators you know, here in the US. And I think it's, as you mentioned, there's you know, roughly 17 million of those uh, creators in the US. But if we think on a global basis, some of the, some of the things that we're trying to solve with, with blockchain technology, I think will make an even bigger impact on some of these creators uh, in other areas of the world, which I'm really, really excited by. Awesome. Well, thanks, Kevin. And thanks, everyone, for tuning in. We're really excited to um, continue to track your, your work, uh, Kevin, and, and on Rally. And uh, can't wait to see um, all the amazing things that this platform is going to do for people all over the world. So thanks again for taking the time. Yeah, thanks, Ian.